Good evening and welcome to Scrum 5. Yes, it's been a long wait, but it's finally here, the start of the new URC season. And we have a stellar lineup here. They are waiting patiently to analyse what has been an action packed weekend. All four Welsh regions in action, the start of the WXV in New Zealand, and we now know who will fight it out in Paris for the Webb Ellis Trophy next weekend. Yes, it's going to be New Zealand against South Africa. What a mouth-watering clash that will be. And uh, whoever wins will make World Cup history and lift the Webb Ellis Trophy for a record fourth time. Not bad. Well, I'm delighted uh, to be joined this evening by former Wales outside half, Eleanor Snowsill, Scrum 5 stalwart to fair play, has a move from that seat all day, <laughs> Sean Holly, and former Wales centre, Thomas George Llewellyn Shanklin. Who oh, knew? The full <laughs> intro. <thank you. laughs> That's what you get on this programme. Good evening, team. Um, well, look, let's hear from somebody who I'm sure is beaming today. Yes, a big smile on his face. Not like that, Brian Habana. How are you feeling today? And I've got to be. He's bragging now, isn't it? The Eiffel Tower. It's a poster. <laughs> well, no, I, again, I'm grateful. Thanks, thanks for letting me use your apartment, Jane Paris. I'm um, hopefully I can use it for the next World Cup as well. <laughs> hey, good luck, Brian. We wish you the best of luck next weekend. Thank you very much for joining us, Brian the Barney. Right, good right. to Have talk to you there, uh, Springboks legend. Right then, Sean, Tom, I know you want to dive a little deeper into the semi-finals. This is where you come into your own. You've got your notepads. You've got all your stats in your head as well. Geeksville, come on, what have you got for us? Yeah, well, we'll do that, Kat. And... Um, Oh, yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> We're going to look at the breakdown, because like in any big game, Tom, but particularly now knockout games like the World Cup final, the breakdown is key. We've got oh, next that... week, the final, two yeah. massive teams. Where is that going to be won and lost, Tom? The breakdown. And a lot of it is to do with ruck speed. If you get good ruck speed, you're on the front foot, defences can't realign, you're winning collisions, you've got a good pitcher in front of you. And that is where New Zealand come into their own. 3.3 compared to 4.8 now. Sean, come over here. We've got a demonstration. Uh, do you do any coaching? I used to. <laughs> oh, should have told me. Didn't Just mention a little it. bit, mate. He didn't little mention bit. it, ever. Um, we've got the Rumney rugby boys here. Here they are. Here they are, the legends of Rumney. They're going to take us through a little demonstration um, as to different rucks and what we can expect from the game at the weekend. So, Lewis, Marley, you're going to tackle Lewis. Right, let's go. Well done. Perfect. Now, this is what you'd say would be a standard position in a ruck. Mm. You know, if you're winning the collision, if you're winning the... You, you're going to get quick ruck ball, so it doesn't matter too much. But when you don't and you're in this position, what does it do to the defensive team? Well, we're going to have an arriving play in Evan in, at a moment, but this is, as you say, quite a traditional way that the player would fall. This is quite a horizontal ruck this way. Now, with the ruck laws, then I can come in from here, I can come in from here, even here. Now, if but, Evan comes round yeah, as well. If, if, if we've got a race here, and we talk about winning the race in this aspect, we're going to see lots of this next week. If I can come in and win this race... Also, with the, the ball presentation from Lewis here, it's not that far away. It's uh, an arm's length. If I'm a Dwayne Vermeulen and Evan Etz, the better, Peter Steff to talk with a long reach, and I win this race because I, my entry is so, I can win the race against Evan here. And as soon as I clamp onto that, you know, he's lost that height race. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to move me. I might win the ball, I might win a penalty, but at the very least, Tom, it's going to slow the ruck speed up. And Eleanor, as a 10, what does fastball, what does slow ball do to you and your pitch and what you see? Yeah, ruck speed is absolutely everything as a 10. Um, when you're trying to control the attack, if you get quick ball, it enables you to beat the defenders on the fold. So if you're trying to, you're always trying to beat the defenders, catch them with lower numbers. If the ball slows down, you then have to look at your kicking options. You're playing against a, a really aggressive line speed because the defence have had time to organise. Now, we'll get up again, Lewis. We'll, we'll do another example of a ruck and different ball placement. So, you see this a lot with backs. So, look out for Will Jordan. Look out for uh, Bowden Barrett, uh, Ches and Kobe. These are the guys that sometimes don't win that physical collision. So they have to present the ball differently. Lewis, Marley, you make a tackle again. Now, this is what you see them do. They end up going vertically. Yeah. Which, what does that do to the defence? Well, firstly, excellent by Marley, rolling away for all the young players there towards the touchline immediately, uh, nice and clean for the ref. But now immediately we've got a, a much more narrow ruck for me to enter. I have to now come all the way back 
to legally enter. If I don't, I'm side entry in here, and refs and touch judges will be very big on that. So the race that we talked about now earlier in the last example, I am more likely to lose the race. Remember we talked about Shannon Frizzell, first arrival at yeah. Ruck, unsung hero, gets there quick. Now, I've lost the race, and I'm going to find it very difficult. I'm going to have to roll him. It's very difficult for me. The scrum half can come in and play. It's further away, Shanks. So now I can't get that Jack Glynn. I can't reach the ball. I might illegally have to do it. The only thing I can do now is get underneath Evan and try to counter-ruck him back. But if he's got players latching onto him and strengthening and anchoring him, then, you know, I'm not going to get there. And the quicker the ball will be for New Zealand. Because everybody wants quick ruck speed. New Zealand thrive off it. Now, it's not going to be the be or end all, but it's certainly going to help New Zealand in their chances this weekend if they're playing off three-second ruck ball. Uh, absolutely. Well, boys, well done. You're well on then. Scrum 5. You're in the limelight. Um, how'd you get on the weekend? I uh, played two hockey and won 55 nil. so... Oh, quick ball. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good luck. Well done. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, boys. Oh, brilliant stuff. And uh, thank you very much to the boys from Rumney RFC. Uh, lovely to have you on. Stars of the future. Well, on to Wales women who have travelled to New Zealand to take part in the WXV. What's that? Well, a new global tournament that promises to revolutionise the women's international rugby landscape. Quite the promise. So it consists of 18 teams divided into three individual competition. The WXV1, the WXV2 and, yes, you guessed it, the WXV3. Now, the top division, WXV1, includes the top three women's Six Nations finishers and the top three from the cross-regional tournament. There will be no relegation for at least the first season. So Wales, who finished third in this year's Six Nations, are in the top tier, alongside Australia, England, Canada, New Zealand and France. And Joanne Cunningham's side, well, they spent their week in Wellington ahead of their clash against Canada. Canada victorious then, the final score 42 points to 22. And here is how they all fared in WXV1 after the first weekend. A convincing win for England against Australia. And, well, the world champions, New Zealand, beaten by France, just a point in it. And Wales, well, they'll have to dust themselves off uh, pretty soon because uh, they'll face uh, the Black Ferns on home turf next week. Right then, you ready? Let's get straight to it, shall we? The URC kicked off this weekend. All four Welsh regions in action. And we're going to start with the Scarlets, who travelled to South Africa. A tough one, this one, to face the Bulls earlier today. Two and a half minutes played of this opening season. Grobler just sitting on that ball, expect Borster short. OK, then. Well, from Pretoria to the sports ground, Justin Tipperick made his 200th appearance. Not bad for the Ospreys yesterday, as Toby Booth's men travelled to last year's semi-finalist, Connacht, in Galway. Uh, JJ Hanrahan outside space for Farrell. Farrell gallops into the 22. Right, then, the Dragons haven't bagged a victory on the opening weekend for... 10 years. They were hoping for a change of fortunes when they welcomed Edinburgh to Rodney Parade. So, Bradley Roberts, the Wales international, successful with his first throw. On to Cardiff, then, they have a new head coach, Matt Sherratt, and his first job in the hot seat, well, to give fans' favourite Willis Hallahollow a new, well, a new contract, really, and a return to the side. Um, they were hoping to get their season off to a bang against Benetton at the Arms Park. Third line oh. out in a row for Teddy Williams. One stop. The, uh, the first weekend, here we are, the results. And um, what a game between uh, Zebra and Ulster. 12 tries in all, Ulster getting the win there. We've mentioned Connacht Ospreys and Dragons Edinburgh. Um, really close one between the Lions and the Stormers. And between uh, Cards and Benetton, we mentioned just that point. And earlier today, we've had uh, two games. Uh, Glasgow Warriors beating Leinster. That one, a bit of a shock.
it. Time against us. Thank you very much, you three. Brilliant stuff. And thank you to the Rubney RFC boys. Brilliant stuff. Give us a wave. There we are. Fantastic. Um, plenty of rugby coming up over the next few days. We have uh, uh, next weekend, I should say, uh, weekend number two. We've got the Ospreys against Zebra. That game will be live on Scrum 5 on Saturday. And then we've got the Scarlets still in South Africa on S4C. But it has been a tough opening weekend, hasn't it? We're all agreed. We need a little patience, don't we, going forward? Hopefully, we'll have a few wins next weekend. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.